Good evening. Good evening. Still getting used to saying that. I know it. What are we going to do tonight? Well, I'd, I'd like to uh, get a little wiser before we leave this session. Oh, that's a good idea because we could use all that wiseness that we can find. I, I need to be, I mean, need to have more wiseness. Specifically, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to talk about the book of Proverbs, chapters one through nine. How many chapters is that? One through nine, that would be nine <laughs> chapters. Okay, you're the, you're the math guy. Okay. And I wonder if anybody cheated and read those ahead of time. I don't know. How many, it, how many days are there in the week? Seven. So about how many chapters did they read every day then? Uh, about one and, and two-sevenths okay. or something like that. Okay, good. We might as well think about what we're going to do next time. Yeah. How many chapters we want to try to cover next time? Four. Like chapters two through well, two, we, three, four, five. We've already covered one through nine. Well, yeah, but we want to go back, and there's there's some stuff in there that we're not going to cover today. Oh, okay. And we'll go back and cover those. So we'd like that two, three, four, and five. Would that be okay? Sure. So how many chapters? That's four chapters. That's four chapters. And then how many days in the week? Seven. So how many chapters would they need to read every day? Like seven or eight? They need to read, a, no, they need to read less than, or a little over half a chapter a day. Oh, okay. Okay. So I hope they get that straight. Okay. Because I'm confused. <laughs> I am very confused. <laughs> So, Lord willing, next time we'll begin in chapter 2, 3, 4, and 5, and, and we'll go mm -hmm. back and look at some individual Proverbs. Right. We'll still do what we talked about before, where we look for, pick out certain characters, wisdom, wealth, and things like that. Right. we we'll go through those those four chapters Okay. next time, Lord willing. Well, right. I'm already looking forward to that. We haven't even done this one yet. I am, too. We, let's just skip this one and go straight to that one. No, we've already, <laughs> we put so much work into <laughs> yeah. this, we better stick with it. <laughs> Uh, we're going to cover Proverbs 1 through 9, but uh, we're not going to do every word. We'll, right. we'll do that next week. We'll cover every word in chapters every word. 2 through. We'll break it down. The, the admonition begins in chapter 1, and beginning in verse 8. It says, Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Indeed, they are a grateful wreath to your head and ornaments about your neck. My son, if, a sin if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us lie and wait for blood. Let us ambush the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them alive like Sheol, even whole as those who go down to the pit. We shall find all kinds of precious wealth, and we shall fill our houses with spoil. Throw in your lot with us. We shall all have one purse. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Keep your feet from their path, for their feet run to evil, and they hasten to shed blood. Indeed, it is useless to spread the net in the eyes of any bird, but they lie in wait for their own blood. They ambush their own lives. So, at, so are the ways of everyone who gains by violence. It takes away the life of its possessors. Fundamentally, then, what, what's the initial purpose of these first nine chapters? What, what, what's the primary goal or purpose here? Instruction to a, a young man. It, there are, in chapters 1 through 9, there are, well, really in chapters 1 through 7, there are 10 my son speeches uh, used as a, as a tool for a father to instruct his son as he is gaining maturity, as he is um, getting on in years and able to take on more responsibility for himself. And the father wants to see him be successful as he begins to get more responsibility and, and take control more of, of more of his own life. And so the father begins doling out these pieces of wisdom, these these pieces of instruction, so that the son can be successful. It's almost an an, an apprenticeship type of feel to some of them, where where there's really a, you know, I've I've learned some things about life, and now I want to pass those things on to you, as you are starting to take on more of your own life. That might you think it'd be interesting for somebody to go back and just pick out those seven my son statements in those chapters. Ten my son. Oh, yeah, ten, ten. The, the ten, chapters one through one seven. Through seven. Yeah. Ten. They're they're easy to find. That find find the paragraphs that start with my son, and you found a my son section. So you think it'd be beneficial for somebody to go back and pick those out and see what they have to say? I think it, it would be excellent. But they probably don't have anything to do with us today. I mean, they were just yeah. for a father and a son. Well, obviously, it's it's very old. It's old stuff. Yeah. So well, they'll have to decide for themselves. Yeah. Uh, in these chapters one through nine, one writer suggested, or just used the, these this designation. He referred to Dame Wisdom and Madam. Folly, and he said he got that from somewhere else. But wisdom and folly, either one or the other, or both of them, are mentioned in all those chapters one right. through nine. 
it's legitimate then to take that section and, and say that it focuses on wisdom and folly because mm -hmm. it does. They're yeah. mentioned in every one of those chapters, either one or the other or both. True. We want to take a look first at the character of these two different ones. Uh, wisdom is priceless. She is more precious than jewels. And that's what it says in Proverbs 3.15. He is more precious than jewels and nothing you desire compares with her. She's beyond mm -hmm. comparison with anything. She is the source of protection and honor. In verses 6 through 8 of chapter 4, Do not forsake her and she will guard you. Love her and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is acquire wisdom. And with all your acquiring, get understanding. Prize her and she will exalt you. She will honor you if you embrace her. Wisdom is referred to as our sister, as our intimate friend, someone that's that's closely associated with us, closely related to us in Proverbs 7, 4. We need to say to wisdom, you are my sister and call understanding your intimate friend. That's the kind of relationship we need to develop with wisdom. And that's what she wants to develop with us. Wisdom is godlike. She builds us up as, as God does. And Proverbs one twenty three offers, turn to my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you. And so she you know, God does the same thing. God sometimes gives us reproof, mm -hmm. not for our destruction, but for our building up. Right. And so wisdom offers this to us. Mm -hmm. And a few verses later in verse 33 of chapter 1, But he who listens to me shall live securely and shall be at ease from the dread of evil. And so uh, she offers, she's God-like and, she, and she builds us up. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that she's referred to as the tree of life in chapter 3, verse 18. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who hold her fast. If only Adam and Eve had uh, had a better relationship with wisdom. Wouldn't that have been a whole different thing? Then, yeah, yeah the, I think it would have been. The whole world, if somebody else wouldn't have messed it up down the line. Right. And I'm afraid one of us would have messed it up eventually. <laughs> if, <laughs> if, it, if it made if, it down to us, if it had made it this we, long, we would have right. managed to fix it. Yeah. It seems that wisdom has the characteristic of being eternal in Proverbs chapter 8. There's some discussion about this, but one of the possibilities is that she is eternal. Mm -hmm. And it says there in Proverbs 8, beginning verse 22, The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his way, before his works of old. From everlasting I was established, from the beginning, from the earliest times of the earth. When there were no depths I was brought forth, when there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills I was brought forth, while he had not yet made the earth and the fields, nor the first dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there, when he inscribed a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when the springs of the deep became fixed, when he set for the sea its boundary, so that the water should not transgress its command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth. Then I was beside him as a master workman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the world, his earth, and having my delight in the sons of men. On the other hand, we have the character of folly. And how is folly presented? What What is her character? Well, she is not presented very positively. She is no. presented as an adulteress or occasionally as a prostitute, a harlot, and um, just not very many kind things to say about folly. No, no. What, what's kind of a general description of, of her? Well, Proverbs 2, <laughs> verse 16, to deliver you from the strange woman, from the adulteress who flatters with her words. From the very beginning, that's not a very nice description. It's not. How else is she described? She is godless and immoral, Proverbs 2, 17, that leaves the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. She is godless. She forgets about God. She is not guided by God in her thinking. She's immoral. She doesn't follow a standard code of morality. She just kind of does what she wants to do when she wants to do it, whatever feels good. That's not a good choice. And he goes on, I think, in Proverbs 6 and continues that same thought. Right, to keep you from the evil woman, from the smooth tongue of the adulteress. And so she is godless and immoral. What else do we know about her? Well, she is boisterous. She is naive. She knows nothing. Proverbs 9.13, the woman of folly is boisterous. She is naive and knows nothing. That pretty well sums, pretty it, well up. sums it up. <laughs> That's exactly what that verse says. What else? She is shameless. She has no, she, she doesn't know how to blush. I think is, 
how Jeremiah phrases it yeah. at one point. But in exactly. Proverbs, Proverbs 30, 20, this is the way of an adulterous woman. She eats and wipes her mouth and says, I have done no wrong. That sounds an awful lot like our society today. Uh, very there's, much. There's no such thing as right and wrong. Mm -hmm. If you want to do it, fine. If I want to do it, fine. If we're doing two, two different things, it's still fine. Uh, whatever we do, I haven't done anything wrong. Right. We, and, and almost to the point of being able to celebrate um, various lifestyles that a generation or two ago were considered deviant lifestyles that were not not acceptable to be talked about in, in you know in good company now they're being celebrated they're they're in the media they're in the news they're on tv they're everywhere and that that's exactly right we just happened to see a part of a pbs program this week and it started out pretty well because it uh, was showing the reichs museum and some of the artwork that this is going to be interesting and then he goes into buying marijuana on the street and how they don't legislate morality and then they kind of figure just kind of let everybody do what they want to the red light district and the drugs and all those things and they think that's probably a, a better approach mm -hmm. to dealing with society and so i've often thought that if we want to see where america is going to be in 10 or 20 years we just need to look to europe mm -hmm. and unless we take different paths we follow behind them absolutely and so you're right that, that today things are celebrated that not that long ago would not have been celebrated or even mentioned now, as we look at their, their methods, what there, there are some things they have in common. Yes. Well, they both pursue men. They, they both actively seek to uh, come into contact with, with others. Mm -hmm. And so the folly specifically seeks those who are vulnerable. Proverbs chapter 7, verses 6 and 7. Mm -hmm. For at the window of my house, I looked out through my lattice, and I saw among the naive, I discerned among the youths, a young man lacking sense. And as soon as she sees that young man and, and she figures out that he doesn't have a, enough sense, that's who she targets on. That's that's where she wants to set her sights. That's pretty easy prey. You look for somebody who doesn't have any sense, mm -hmm. go for them. Is that, what, is that what wisdom does? Well, interestingly, wisdom actually sets her sights on, this, uh, on the same people, but for different reasons. Proverbs 8, verses 4 through 6, To you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. O naive ones, discern prudence, and O fools, discern wisdom. Listen, for I shall speak noble things, and the opening of my lips will produce right things. So she calls out to the to those who are simple. She calls out to those who are naive, but not for the purpose of entrapping them or enticing them or fooling them, but rather to educate them, to share with them, uh, you know, the the proper way of living and, and trying to strengthen them. Um, we, we liken that she calls out to them and, and tries to teach them noble things. And that made us think of, of Philippians 4, 8, whatever is true, whatever is lovely, whatever is honorable, whatever is noble, think on these things. And that's what, uh, that's what God calls us to do. And so she's seeking their welfare right. and not their destruction. Right. Uh, another method that, that she uses is she uses flattery, as it points out in Proverbs 7, 5. And this is folly. This is folly. Yeah. That they may keep you from an adulteress, from the foreigner who flatters with her words. And here she's actually referred to as a, a foreigner, mm -hmm. someone who's foreign to God's people. Right. She's not God's people. She offers riches and wealth, but it's that get rich quick thing. Right. Uh, at the very beginning of Proverbs, beginning in verse 10 of chapter 1, we read, My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, Come with us, let us lie and wait for blood. Let us am ambush the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them alive like Sheol, even whole, as those who go down to the pit. We shall find all kinds of precious wealth. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Throw in your lot with us. We shall all have one purse. Mm -hmm. and that's that get rich quick type of uh, uh, situation. One of the methods that Folly uses is that she is seductive. She mm -hmm. seduces, as it says in Proverbs 7.10. And behold, a woman comes to meet him, dressed as a harlot and cunning of heart. And then just a few, chap few verses later in that same chapter, it says, I have spread my couch with coverings, with cuttered linens of Egypt. I have sprinkled my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us drink our fill of love until the morning. Let us delight ourselves with caresses. For the man is not at home. Her husband's not home. Mm -hmm. He has gone on a long journey. He has taken a bag of money with him. At full moon, he will come home. I know how long he's going to be gone. Mm -hmm. He's not going to be back for a while. She uses that cunning to, to seduce people. She doesn't care about the outcome. She doesn't care about what the end is going to be. Proverbs 5, 6 says she does not ponder the path of life. Her ways are unstable. She does not 
know it. Mm -hmm. and that's sad when somebody doesn't even know where they're headed. And right. she doesn't know because she just doesn't care. Right. Uh, ultimately, she's seeking destruction. Mm -hmm. Back up just a few verses in Proverbs 5, beginning in verse 3. Oh, actually, verse 1. My son, give wisdom, give attention to my wisdom, incline your ear to my understanding, that you may observe discretion, and your lips may reserve knowledge. Then he says, For the lips of an adulteress drip honey, and smoother than oil is her speech. But in the end, she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lay hold of Sheol. And so she is seeking destruction, her own destruction and the destruction of those who give in to her. Mm -hmm. In the next chapter, chapter 6 of Proverbs, beginning in verse 24, it suggests that, that we need to keep from the evil woman, from the smooth tongue of the adulteress. Do not desire her beauty in your heart, nor let her catch you with her eyelids. For on account of a harlot, one is reduced to a loaf of bread, and an adulteress hunts for the precious life. She looks for destruction, and that's that's what she's doing. One of the ways she does that is by offering adventure. Right. Proverbs 6, 27 and 28 says, Can a man take fire in his bosom, and his clothes not be burned? Or can a man walk on hot coals, and his feet not be scorched? And what kind of an image does that bring up in your mind when you talk about those things reminds me of when I was a kid. We'd go to the circus and see these various performers that would do amazing things. That uh, then maybe I'd go home and try them and get hurt. And, and you can picture people walking on coals. We've seen that on TV or, or whatever. And there's a trick to it. They have a way that it, that it doesn't burn them, but uh, but that might entice somebody who doesn't know what they're doing to get burned. Be kind of like a fire eater, yeah, or a sword eater, or some of those yeah. things that they did. And it's it's adventure, mm -hmm. and she offers that adventure. Makes it sound fun. What about on the other hand? What about wisdom? Uh, what what can we say about her her method? Well, Proverbs one verses twenty and twenty three says, "Wisdom shouts in the streets; she lifts her voice in the square. At the head of the noisy street, she cries out. At the entrance of the gates in the city, she utters her sayings. How long, O naive ones, will you love simplicity? And scoffers delight themselves in scoffing, and fools hate knowledge." Turn to my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you. It sounds as if she has a little bit different different method for accomplishing what she wants to do. Right. She she does. She offers of herself. She she is willing to give selflessly and willing to give to the betterment of others rather than to their destruction. What does she do as she as she's doing that? She's offering security. Proverbs one thirty three, but he who listens to me shall live securely and shall be at ease from the dread of evil. She also offers instruction. Proverbs 8, verses 8 through 10, All the utterances of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing crooked or perverted in them. They are all straightforward to him who understands, and right to those who find knowledge. Take my instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choicest gold. So she doesn't offer that get-rich-quick scheme. No, it's a whole different thing. Right. She, offers, uh, she offers something of greater value. She offers counsel and wisdom. Proverbs eight fourteen. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. Power is mine. It's interesting. She she also offers better companions. Um, she she is surrounded by good people, and Proverbs eight twelve shows us the companions that she has to offer. She says, "I wisdom dwell with prudence, and I find knowledge and discretion." Well, prudence and knowledge and discretion those are those are characters I want to be around. And, and if I search for wisdom, I will find those other things as well. In chapter 1, it describes the, the, the other companions that, that the adulteress seeks. And they're thieves, and they're even cutthroats. They even, they even cut each other's throat. Mm -hmm. And this is a whole different category of companions right. that, that wisdom offers. She, uh, interestingly, also offers riches and wealth. Lady Folly offers riches and wealth, but it's a uh, get-rich-quick scheme, but for... For uh, wisdom, she offers wealth that is different. Proverbs 8, verses 18 to 21, Riches and honor are with me, enduring wealth and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, even pure gold, and my yield than choicest silver. I walk in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice to endow those who love me with wealth that I may fill their treasuries. You know, she promises riches and honor. Mm-hmm. Folly promises riches, but there's no honor in the way that she gains her riches. No, it's gained through through theft and, and, yeah. and taking advantage of other people. And so this is a this is a completely different type of wealth that that wisdom is offering, and it's a, a wealth that transcends uh, money. Um, if we live wisely, then there is 
often monetary reward that goes with that, but more importantly, there's honor that goes with it. There's righteousness. There's there's goodness that goes with it. So, what's the consequence? What uh, you know? What uh, what is what's going to happen depending on what choice we make? Well, if we make a foolish choice, then we will pay a consequence. Proverbs nine seventeen and eighteen says, "Stolen water is sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant." But he does not know that the dead are there, that her guests are in the depths of Sheol. That's folly. So if we choose folly, we choose uh, the adulteress, mm -hmm. then that is the the consequence of our choice. So that, right. that's a pretty critical choice. It is. I want to just interject here that the, these chapters are teaching. They really are a father teaching the son and there for us in a, in a physical sense. Mm -hmm. We'll see in just a second there's, there's a spiritual application that, that's even greater than that and it's easy to pick that up as we go along mm -hmm. but I do want to mention that these chapters do stress the importance of teaching our children about sexual purity Amen. and uh, it just brings to mind what Steve Holliday does with his sexual purity seminars that that's not just something that that's optional or or just you know, take it or leave it I think he is really fulfilling the spirit of, of Proverbs 1 through 9 where it tells us we need to teach our children about sexual purity and about sexual immorality and I really appreciate what he's doing because that's what Proverbs is trying to do mm -hmm. in those first nine chapters I just wanted to wanted to mention that well well it's interesting that you know you think about these being my son lessons and and as a father is instructing his son broadly in a sense about wisdom in general he uses the figure of attraction to two different types of women as as the illustration for that and so it makes sense as a father speaking to his, his young son that, you know, as that son is coming of age and begins thinking about relationships, that there are two types of women the father wants to instruct his son about. But there's a broader instruction that, that goes with, with that as far, far as folly and, and wisdom itself. And so he's kind of, kind of two birds with one stone a little bit here as he teaches about physical relationships, but also teaches a much broader uh, relationship with God. And so if, if we look at the at a spiritual application of this, what kind of a comparison is there? Well, we, we see that God uh, is portrayed throughout the Old Testament as being married to Israel, specifically in the book of Hosea, but there are other scriptures as well where, where that relationship between God and Israel is, is very much pictured as a husband-wife relationship. And so there is, there is a, a spiritual context there for that. And often when they were unfaithful, it was, it was presented in, in the sense of mm -hmm. adultery. Right. And it was very, uh, very stark in Hosea because it really did happen to Hosea who took a wife uh, from prostitution and married her, but she kept running back to her old way of life. And it was just showing God's relationship with his people and how he wants them to, to do the right things and they keep making the wrong choices. Mm -hmm. And so as we think about seeking the right kind of woman, wisdom or folly, then uh, there, there's a connection there in the Old Testament, but there's also a connection in, in the New Testament, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Jesus is portrayed as being married to the church. We have that very clearly uh, portrayed by Paul in Ephesians chapter 5 and, all, and also in some other passages. In uh, Revelation uh, 19, 7 through 9, let us rejoice and be glad and give the glory to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. And it was given to her to clothe herself in fine linen, bright and clean, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. And he said to me, Write, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the are true words of God. And as we look at these passages in Revelation, we need to keep in mind that it's it's not talking about heaven or the church, it's talking about God's people. Mm -hmm. it, it, it goes beyond here or there. And so this includes his people beginning here, the church. And Toward the end, in chapter 21, verses 2 and 9, verse 2 says, I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. And in verse 9, it, it, it describes maybe more specifically who that husband is. And one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and spoke with me, saying, Come here, I shall show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. In the Old Testament, the relationship between God and his people was a, a marriage. Mm -hmm. In the New Testament, the relationship between Jesus and the church is a marriage. Everything we find in, in Proverbs 1 through 9 that refer to wisdom and folly as women applies to us in the church. Mm -hmm. And if we make the 
the wrong decisions, we, we suffer that con consequence. It's interesting that folly and, and wisdom are presented as ways mm -hmm. in Proverbs. In Proverbs 131 says, So that they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be satiated with their own devices. In chapter 2 and verse 12, it says, To deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things. Right. So way is a word that's used to describe what's happening in Proverbs. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says in John 14 and verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Mm -hmm. There are so many warnings in the New Testament, New Testament about deception. Uh, folly in Proverbs operates entirely by deception. Right. And in Colossians chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, he begins that their hearts may be encouraged, having been knit together in love, attaining to all the wealth that comes from the full assurance of understanding, resulting in a true knowledge of God's mystery, that is, Christ himself, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. What's offered to us today is not deception. It is clear knowledge and understanding and wisdom. In chapter 2 and verse 8, it warns, see to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception, according to the tradition of men, according to the elementary principles of the world, rather than according to Christ. That's basically the warning of Proverbs 1 through 9. Be sure you follow real understanding and don't be misled. Don't be duped. It's interesting how a banquet is used mm -hmm. in those chapters. In chapter 9, it's re referred to a banquet prepared by wisdom. Other places... Folly has prepared a, a banquet of her own. Mm -hmm. The description of the banquet of wisdom in Proverbs 9 from verse 1. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out her seven pillars. She has prepared her food. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her maidens. She calls from the tops of the heights of the city. Whoever is naive, let him turn in here. To him who lacks understanding, she says, Come, eat of my food and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake your folly and live and proceed in the way of understanding. And what kind of a parallel do we find to that in the New Testament? John chapter 6, verse 27. Do not work for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man shall give to you, for on him the Father, even God, has set his seal. So there's a banquet prepared for those who, who follow Christ as well. There is a banquet, and it's, it's the best kind of banquet. As we go through those Proverbs, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's hard to not perhaps make a, a connection between Jesus and what's mm -hmm. described there in Proverbs 8. Where it said, The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his way, before his works of old. And Jesus is described in the Gospel of John and Colossians and other places as being present at the creation. Mm -hmm. He existed with God before the world. From everlasting I was established, from the beginning, from the earliest times of the earth. When there were no depths I was brought forth, when there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hill I was brought forth, while he had not yet made the earth and the fields, nor the first dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there, when he inscribed a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when the springs of the deep became fixed, when he set for the sea its boundary, so that the water should not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him as a master workman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the world, his earth, and having my delight in the sons of men. That's really a neat section yes. of Proverbs. And there's so much for us to learn. And so that's why we're going to go back next week, Lord willing, and cover two, three, two through five and, and look a little bit more closely at individual Proverbs that mm -hmm. are incorporated into that and just take a, a little bit closer look at that. Do we have any questions for the people? We've got a couple. Number yeah. one, what is God's relationship with wisdom? Uh, next is, what are some of the methods that folly uses to entice her victims? And then finally, who are wisdom's companions? Those are really good things to think about. Mm -hmm. Those are good questions for, to, to wonder about and go back to chapters 1 through 7 and find those 10 my son right. statements. Whoa, and read verses chapters 2 through 5. It says almost one point something chapter per day. That's a big assignment. That's It, it can be done. Can I handle it? I, I would hope so. Okay. Well, they'll, they'll probably do it. Uh, those who are seeking wisdom will. 
Those who are seeking wisdom will. Very good right. point. Yeah. It's good to be with you again. Good to be with you. I look forward to being with you again next I'm, week. I'm Lord already willing. excited. Okay. See you later. See you.